bagel break from practicing. So remember yesterday I was talking about being really concerned with my sound, which I still am. The room is just not sounding good. I, I rolled up the rug to, think, to see if that would make a difference. <laughs> It doesn't. And I was actually practicing outside today, right here against this wall, and just listening to my sound come back. I mean, it's brick and um, I don't know what you call that, siding, but it sounded even better than it does inside. Anyway, I ordered some a bunch of new reeds. So I play three and a half Rico Royals, and I have for years and years and years, but the last couple weeks I was having this thing where almost every reed I took out seemed to be too thin, too soft. So I got some fours, and just for the heck of it, never been an orange box player, but uh, again, I was concerned about what's going on with my sound, so I'm gonna try some orange boxes. <laughs> Buzzy, for sure, uh, a little bit soft, I think. I might have to go with the, the fours. This is so sad. Back in February, we got a little bit of rain in Los Angeles and this whole area was so green and now it's all back to being like tinderbox, bone dry and brown. This question from one of my online students, uh, let's call him Dexter. The subject of the question just says, why? With a lot of question marks after it. And this is a deep one. I, I know exactly this feeling. Uh, I'll just read you what he's asking. Why am I doing this? Why do I continue to practice the saxophone and try to get better? What am I searching for through playing and improvising jazz? Why am I afraid of being successful, but I am equally disappointed in not being successful at all? Second, why do I feel that I'm not progressing even though I have been? Maybe I'm searching for some deeper interaction. Third and finally, why do I feel like I'm just not good enough? What do I need to show me that I am better than I give myself credit for? Should I continue down this path of teaching and playing? These are questions that go through my head all the time. What can I do to make things seem more attainable? Maybe I should sit down and seriously answer all these questions. I have no doubt that everyone here has or is experiencing these same feelings and questions. I would love to hear you talk about this and share your insight because uh, an open dialogue on these things could really help me right now. Thanks so much, Dexter. Here's the thing, when you spend all of your time or most of your time just practicing and you're working on things alone in a room by yourself, whatever those things are, then you're fo focusing all of your time on the means and none of it on the end. So what I mean by that is the end result is what? Well, for me, I can only speak personally, the end result is to play music really well with other people. But the goal is to play with other people um, or to play music, not just to play the saxophone alone all by myself. Yeah, I practice that way, but it's a means to an end. And I find personally the times I get darkest on myself, my playing, when I think about it, I have to ask myself, what playing situations am I have I been in lately? and or what playing situ uh, situations are on the horizon. And very often I find the answer when I'm most bummed out about my playing, I'm not playing enough with other people. Now this can happen, uh, there's a flip side to this, which I remember when I was living in New York and playing a lot of different sessions with a lot of different people and I would get bummed out about my playing not being up to a certain level. But it was a different kind of bummed out because it was more of a, I was being challenged and feeling like I wasn't up to the challenge. But when you're just playing scales or playing whatever all the time and, and you're just kind of doing that, it's, I, I don't find that stuff very enjoyable anyway, let alone if there's no outlet at the end of it. So best case scenario, you have some sort of regular gig, um, but, or I, I shouldn't say best case scenario, that's a great case, or uh, some cool gigs on the horizon, or uh, you don't even need them to be gigs, but just playing with other people. I know some of the guys who attended the, um, the saxophone retreat, the inside outside retreat last summer have reported back in the year since that they've gotten some great opportunities that they've made themselves just getting to getting together with other musicians, you know, in wherever they lived, having some sort of weekly get together. One guy, I think maybe Tony was talking about, he has like a session, I forget what he calls it, but like once a week they're supposed to all show up and have learned a certain tune and they play that tune. So it's, it's like a workshop. I just had some guys over to my, my place last week to play uh, in the evening and you know that's that's fulfilling, that's satisfying to my soul, you know, 
Um, anytime I have either a session, a gig, or a recording, that always kind of like gets the creative juices flowing for writing new music or you know, uh, whenever I have a, a tour or gigs coming up, that's what motivates me to, it, it's extra motivation to practice beyond just maintenance. Um, so I think that that is really important and it's and you can really lose sight of that when you're just practicing by yourself. Another thing short of that that I always do is, and you can call it transcribing, taking off solos, whatever. I'm all sweaty because I'm on a hike right now. Listening to music and playing along with music, you know, something I do very frequently is, is not just transcribe solos, but play along with records. I'll put on a recording of somebody. I, I did it with something, uh, a Warren Marsh recording a week or so ago. And I, I was using that as an opportunity to learn a song called I Should Care. And I was playing along with him and just that process, at least then I'm playing with real people, not, you know, it's a subcategory, you know, I'm once removed, I'm not actually in the room with the people, but I'm playing along to a recording of music with live musicians and not just a metronome. I find that either that or like the other day, I was um, listening to this Mark Turner ballads album a bunch in the car and one particular phrase on the ballad Skylark jumped out at me that I was like, what is that? And that gets me excited. Then I go I pop the CD in, the, in my stereo, I start to transcribe it to figure out what it is. That sense of wonder I find to be very important. Just like, you know, maintaining a sense of like enthusiasm and wonder for it. So this um, Mark Turner album I was talking about that I've been listening to, Ballads, on Skylark, let me show you the lick that, that I was referring to. I think it's right after this, right here. Right here. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So I hear that and my instinct is instantly one of wonder and motivation and like I gotta go figure out what that is. That's exciting to me. That's, that is a constant go-to as a, as a source for continuing um, motivation for me. If you're just playing the mechanics and the rudiments, so to speak, over and over, it's not enough. It's one-sided. You need the other side of the coin, you know? Conversely, if you're not focusing on any sort of fundamentals and that stuff, you won't have the abilities to execute music the way you'd like to, so that can bum you out as well. So it, it really is a balance. I focus most of my time on practicing fundamental-oriented stuff so that I can just have a decent control of the instrument, but um, I hope to be either playing gigs with musicians, playing sessions with other musicians, ones that I enjoy playing and playing with. And if that's in short supply, then I always go to recordings. I always go to, I'm getting attacked by bugs here, I have to get out of this area, but I go to recordings as a real source of both inspiration and motivation. So something to think about that. I mean, those are kind of deep questions. Those are just a few thoughts I had. I hope that's helpful. I'm sure that uh, Dexter is not the only one experiencing this. I know he's not because I, I experience it on a, uh, if not weekly, certainly semi-weekly basis. One last thought about transcribing. It's a natural thing, man. You know, my daughter was sitting in the car this morning on the way to school, literally transcribing a song off of a, of a silly little, like a toy that she has. And it has music and she kept listening to it over and over until she could sing it, you know, note for note with, with the toy.